Welcome to the fifth annual Pixel Awards. The photography industry's premier award ce ceremony <laughs> celebrating this year's greatest accomplishments and biggest failures. We are going to go over the absolute winner of the camera of the year. This one's gonna shock people, I think, Tony, because it's affordable, it's accessible, it's versatile, and I think you're gonna like it. And there's so much more, but first we wanna thank our sponsor, Squarespace. Squarespace has sponsored five Pixel Awards so far. They have been absolutely fantastic for us, but also for you. You can start your own website at squarespace.com slash Chelsea and find all the benefits of getting off of social media, like being able to book appointments from clients, having your own custom domain, so you're not gmail.com anymore. Yeah, and not only that, you can sell prints, you can have galleries, and you can get 10% off. Go to squarespace.com slash Chelsea, use the coupon code Chelsea, that's C-H-E-L-S-E-A, that'll get you 10% off. Tony, let's get into it. Let's start with a drink. We're a little tense. This is a cheers to this not very good trophy that I made. And we're gonna see who's gonna go home with this baby. It's us. The first award is a big one. This is the smartphone camera of the year. I wanna start with the runners up because I think it's gonna be surprising. The iPhone 14 Pro, not the winner. It's the runner up. It was great, but I was disappointed that the lens improvements weren't that much and the telephoto is exactly the same. Which brings me to the Google 7 Pro, which is a great camera. It's also not the winner. It had some fantastic innovations, but most of them were already in the Google 6 Pro, like the long exposures. But the camera we really liked the most, the camera I wish I could use if I wasn't an Apple fanboy, the Samsung S22 Ultra. Woo, that telephoto was impressive. Finally, a smartphone camera with something different. We haven't seen something different in a while. And you can go back to our review video and see that we were zooming in on the moon and all sorts of things far away. And it was just cool to see that cameras are starting to go telephoto. I cannot wait for Apple to rip them off and finally take <laughs> steal that technology five years after it was new. All right, let's get into the biggest disappointment of the year. There are a couple big ones. But the most important one is the same one from last year. Camera manufacturers still haven't put anti-theft technology on cameras, and we're seeing articles almost every day about people getting robbed. Get, get on it if you want one of these. You'll get an automatic one. This is solid gold. How about just allow people to like register their serial number so if it's stolen, somebody could look it up at least. Yeah. Come on. Come on. I'm gonna, I need to drink. <laughs> Let's go on to the innovation of the year. There was not much here. We saw some interesting improvements in image enhancement through the Topaz Labs. I liked how it handled old portraits, but still it kind of only benefited really old portraits and anything else I didn't see a noticeable improvement on. Made me look a little weird, but it was still good. I had previously put Adobe not supporting all those hex files, those efficient JPEG replacements, because they still don't support it. But then I saw Adobe was finally building it into beta versions of Camera Raw. So I took them off the WTF list and put it on the innovation list, but it's still not available. So maybe next year. I think the innovation of the year came in the very expensive Hasselblad X2D 100C. They put internal storage, so you can have a memory card that you can put in and remove, but also internal storage as backup, and it's about a terabyte of storage. So that means if your card fails, you still have your photos. That's a smart idea, Hasselblad. Yeah, thanks for actually doing something a little bit different. That makes me hassle glad. Let's drink, drink to it. That. Are you laughing at your hassle glad comment? No, I was laughing at your all drink to that. <laughs> okay. That's not corny compared to hassle glad. <laughs> okay, the firmware update of the year goes to. <laughs> Are you going to go? The Nikon Z9 version 3.0. Version 3.0. You've got autofocus going. All right. I can't wait to see version 4.0. Let's move on to the drone of the year. The runner up is the Mavic Mini 3. It was excellent, as was the 3 Pro. They're nice and lightweight, and I wouldn't feel too bad about crashing one into somebody's head if it came to that. The Avada also got a runner-up award. It's supposed to fly upside down. The problem is when it does that and then crashes abruptly into the ground, which it has been doing, though maybe they fixed that. But still, the winner of the drone of the year is the Mavic 3 Classic. Okay. It's pretty much the same. One it, less camera. It doesn't have the telephoto, but 
but I love the regular Mavic 3 and I never use the telephoto, so I've taken to recommending that to people. It's a little more affordable. Let's cover what we call the what the f of the year. And whew, there were a lot of contenders this year. It was a really big field to try to narrow down. So we apologize to all the what the f**ks that have been overlooked. Yes, if you are a what the f that's been overlooked, please contact us and we will amend the video to add you. The first what the f of the year, the runner up, is the Sony Xperia Pro I. This is a smartphone that advertised a one inch sensor. You know what? What? Didn't use all that one inch sensor. No, the outside of the sensor is just completely dark. But it's, so it's not, uh, not using a, it's like having an eight cylinder engine and only four of them actually fire. But then advertising it as an eight cylinder engine only. Like, it's just wasted. It didn't make any sense to me. What's the next one? Sony CF Express Type A cards. Now, that format's been around for like three years now. But yes. we have not been able to get anything bigger than 160 gigabytes. And finally, this year, they introduced up to 640 gigabyte cards. But how much money was it? $1,250 a card. So if you got two cards, which you would for something like a Sony A1 or A7R5, you're spending $2,500. That's as much as a Sony A7 IV. That much as a whole good professional full frame, just on storage. Why is it so much? It's so What is going much. on? You could buy off this whole award show for that amount. <laughs> <laughs> and the winner of the What the of the Year award goes to... Me? Canon. <laughs> Canon blocked third-party lenses. No one was happy about it, Canon. No one said, good idea, did they? It was oh. a bad idea. Yeah, you're going to sell some more lenses, but you're definitely selling fewer cameras. Like, what are you doing? They're probably going to sell some kind of medical device to make up for the loss of money. Don't you think it would have been fair for them to warn us when we were buying our R-mount cameras that there were no third-party lenses coming? Because there'd always been third, always this been third-party lenses. This isn't about fairness anymore. So, sorry. We're angry. And now for the Lens of the Year Award. Oh my God, we had a lot of lenses this year as everybody's like filling out their mirrorless lineup. Everyone is taking the lens roadmaps and they're making them come true. And that's good for us. We had a lot of good things to choose from. Let's talk about the runner up. We had too many. We had the Sigma 20 millimeter F14 Art. Yeah, I thought that was just a great lens. I really think it's good, just a third good party lens. lens. Yeah, what else did we have? Um, well, Nikon released like so many telephoto lenses this year that we haven't had a chance to test. I'm sure they're all excellent and I wanted to mention them. I'm glad they finally have them. Another good solid one that was almost the winner was the Sony 24-70 F2.8 G Master II. The 24-70 is my favorite lens. It's versatile. It's my all-around lens. I could go on a trip and just keep it on the camera body. But the winner, because it was more innovative, was Sony 16-35 F4 Power Zoom lens, a full frame lens, but designed for hybrid shooters. And I really appreciate that Sony is realizing that most camera buyers nowadays are shooting some still and some video. So this is just, it works just like a regular stills lens. It's not a video centric lens, except that it can power zoom. It does kind of like everything well. And I hope we see a lot more lenses like it in the future. Don't get too cocky, Sony. <laughs> okay, here's the best accessory for still images. <laughs> the TechArt LMEA9. The name just falls off the tongue, doesn't it? No, it doesn't. But you no. know what? It's a really cool accessory and it adapts your vintage manual lenses to be autofocus. So Tony was getting like, really cool, vintage -y looking pictures and being able to autofocus with your modern camera. Yeah, it's like film sort of analog results with a more modern workflow. It's just, it's just cool. fun. I still have yet not made a review about it, but I think it's so cool. We should put a link down there because y'all should check it out. It's just fun. What else do we have? The video accessory oh, of yes. the year. And I'm giving this to two different gimbals, both made by DJI, but they both had some innovations. The new Osmo Mobile is great for smartphones and we use our smartphones more and more, whether for something that requires a smartphone like streaming or just to make quickly make some content. Or and having a yeah. really light gimbal that I can just stabilize it and also works as just a tripod. If I'm filming myself, it allows me to more easily position it and I don't have to get out a separate tripod. But the winner is our RS3 gimbal from DJI, which 
is so much lighter than the previous gimbal. That's nice for me because my arms would get tired and I'd have to interrupt you during a take. It's easy to use, the stabilization works really well, and we get a lot of comments, people asking us what camera we use to shoot the videos, but it's always when we use that gimbal. Okay, let's go to the portfolio website host of the year. The runner up is Squarespace. Oh. Can't wait to hear who won this And the one. winner is also Squarespace. Wow. <laughs> this is biased. Shocker. A little, but we love Squarespace. We have many websites. I have one for myself. I made one for my mom. Tony. I have like five of them. You have five. If I have a new project, I start a new web, uh, a new website using Squarespace because that's it's like permanent home on the web. I get it a custom domain. Any updates I have, I just put it on the website. We even tell all of our friends to get Squarespace mm -hmm. in real life, and they would tell you that's true in the comments. I'm thinking of you, Dave Schloss. We say Squarespace all day. We really do love them because it's easy. You can drag and drop your pictures in. It's configurable. It looks professional. Yeah, and you have galleries. You can have your clients go there. You can book appointments through it. It has so many different options for being exactly what you need to make your business run smoothly. So try it out for free, no credit card needed. You have absolutely nothing to lose. Go to squarespace.com slash Chelsea. Use the coupon code Chelsea to get 10% off. Thank you, Squarespace, and congratulations on winning probably the greatest award you have ever received. <laughs> and now for the photography trend of the year. Trends always come and go, but the last couple of years have been particularly crazy. It's been so trendy up in here. I can't even handle it. Well, first, uh, like social media is all TikTok now. Like Instagram is TikTok What's and Facebook is trying to be TikTok. What's with these kids and the TikTok? And the government's trying to ban TikTok. Even no. YouTube is like pushing us to do shorts, which are basically just vertical TikToks. Listen, I love TikTok. I have TikTok and it has figured me out. It knows me better than anyone else, but everyone is like it. Instagram's trying to be it, Facebook, Everyone. And this trend will drive future camera design decisions. Like they Vertical will Vertical orientation. Right, exactly. And hopefully faster workflows. But that was just the runner up. Another runner up for our trend of the year is the use of instant cameras. Even like Gen Zers love their little Fuji Instax. It's, it's bringing fun. back the Polaroid feel of the 60s and 70s. You get like instant physical results, which people just don't get that much anymore. I love it, and also it's great for Fujifilm, who's making a buttload of money, and then it is funding the developments of the cameras we like even more than the Instax. So, bravo, Instax. And the winner for the best trend of this year is back to film. I love that film cameras have been making a resurgence in the past few years, but especially this year, it seems like everyone wants to get into film again. Uh, even my daughter and her friend got disposable cameras and actually got the film developed. It looks cool, it looks different, it gives you something physical to hold on to, which everything is just so fleeting in this digital world. I love it. Way to go, film cameras. You get real sentimental when you're a little bit tipsy. <sighs> we'll try to get sentimental about this next award, the worst camera of the year. And oh, there were some good ones this year, like the Sony ZV-1F, a vlogging camera, but it had a kind of tiny sensor and slow lens so you weren't going to get any like shallow depth of field or anything in fact it's pretty much going to look like your smartphone also it didn't include any stabilization which you think vloggers often like walk around and stuff that's kind of a must have not my cup of wine but people liked it in the reviews so perhaps we know too much and that's why it could not win this award also no only jpeg only no raw Run that one goes out to you jared but the winner of the worst camera of the year goes to the Pentax KF. Congrats, Pentax. It's nice to see you guys winning awards again. For just $950, you can get an APS-C DSLR that is essentially indistinguishable from so many older DSLRs. It doesn't have reviews, so you guys should help it out. Yeah, nobody has ever reviewed it and it is currently ranked among just DSLRs, which aren't selling well in general. It is ranked number 1,824 out of DSLRs on Amazon. Pentax, I just want to tell you, I've done way worse. That's probably still better than my greatest accomplishment and I'm sorry that we highlighted that this mm. evening. What is the worst thing you've ever done? I can't talk about it. Let's move on. <laughs> 
The two most important awards are coming up. The first is the best video-centric camera of the year. More and more cameras are video-centric and moving downstream, they're becoming less expensive as more people are becoming, well, all TikTok creators, basically. Okay, let's talk about the best video camera of the year. I was thrilled to see the Nikon Z30 released, a small, inexpensive, mirrorless camera with a flip-forward screen and no viewfinder. Nikon made a good shot at it, but I didn't find the autofocus to be quite good enough to win the best video-centric camera of the year. And then we have the Canon R5C, a video-centric version of the Canon R5, which fixed a lot of Canon's problems, but the reason I couldn't give it the award? Let me guess, is it because it took everything broken in the R5, fixed it, then charged everyone thousands of more dollars? <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much right. Yeah, not. I didn't think that was very exciting. What was the winner? There's one more runner up. Ooh. And I really wanted to give this camera the award because I, I would happily shoot with it, except it had just one Achilles heel. What? It's the Panasonic GH6, which, oh, the stabilization was so good. We could throw those gimbals away but it just, it missed autofocus just too many times for me to rely on it. But if you manually focus in video, right. like people more into filming video than us do, then it's a great, amazing option. I would love to place it as the winner, but there was a camera that outperformed, and that was. The Sony FX30. This is in their cinema camera lineup, but it was shockingly inexpensive. Now an APS-C sensor, but Sony happens to have a great variety of video-centric APS-C lenses like, that they've released this year. They really are creating a good suite of lower and less expensive cinema gear because that has been just, either you had to hack a stills camera to try to do your video work or you were using a like very expensive like eight to $20,000 video camera. And it's just, I like to see them make it more accessible. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. I think this is, about the camera being great, but also about the idea being great, making video-centric cameras great while still being affordable. And I feel like Canon, with the R5C decision, they still wanna split who's buying their cameras into people who are gonna spend more, people who are gonna spend less, and they're not giving their all to the lower price cameras. So, good on you, Sony. I'm excited to see a more accessible video camera. And the most important award tonight is the Camera of the Year Award for 2022. It's going home with this solid gold camera on an Apple box. But I hope it doesn't actually go home with anybody except for us because it we have took to some time it. to spray paint that camera. I gotta reuse it next year. Fuji had three excellent cameras released this year. The X-H2 video centric camera and X-H2S, which was higher resolution, and an X-T5. And they all performed the best from any Fuji cameras. I was really impressed by them, but at the same time, I felt like it was Fuji playing catch up. There was nothing about them that I felt like real world made them better than some even less expensive full frame cameras that mm -hmm. exist from the big two manufacturers. And then we had the Sony A7R5, uh, another 60 megapixel camera that had much improved autofocus. And I felt for sure that was gonna win the camera of the year, except we tested it against the Canon R5, which was a couple of years old, and in some ways, the Canon R5 was better or matched it. I thought they were it. on par with each other. I thought yeah. they were the same. So it just kind of felt like playing catch up again. A very good camera, but still on par with something that already existed. A very, it almost won. The Canon R6 Mark II that we've been testing with up to 40 frames per second with the electronic shutter. Pretty amazing sports camera. Still kind of expensive though. And in other ways, not a big departure from the previous Canon R6, but still like definitely worthy of note. Congratulations, Canon. So many cameras of note this year. A lot of good cameras came out. Now, the Nikon Z9 was technically released yet last year, but we couldn't consider it for the 2021 awards because we didn't get it in time. So it is eligible this year. And after the firmware updates, the autofocus improved a lot. It became a much better camera than when it first came out. So the Z9 was a contender, but still did not win. Yeah, I still don't think it's quite as good as last year's winner, which was the Sony A1. And even though it's quite a bit newer, so I couldn't, I just didn't feel right giving it the award this year. It's tough because a lot of these cameras still don't compete with the Alpha One. 
Um, but our winner, the one that we chose, is not in that flagship camera bracket. It's not above a couple thousand dollars. It's actually more affordable. This is the camera that I've been recommending to friends who just asked me. Family. They've got a kid playing soccer and they want something that'll take better sports pictures than their phone. They want to take it on vacation. They want it at birthday parties. They want to take pictures of sports. Mm -hmm. Maybe they take a picture of the little birds that come to their backyard. This camera does it all for under a thousand dollars. And when we tested it, it worked really surprisingly well. It's a very good camera. It is the Canon R10. Congratulations, Canon, on making a good consumer level, inexpensive camera that people can just pick up and shoot with without having to read the manuals and figure everything out. Just a good all around camera. Now, if only I could recommend some third-party lenses for it. Let's reverse that. <laughs> let's, let's do a little Control-Alt-Z on that one. <laughs> all right, so congratulations, Canon. And to um, all the winners. And to all of the winners. And also, sorry to the people that lost. And uh, like we said, you won't be taking home the award. We have to reuse this. We're very cheap. But we will see you next year for the sixth annual Pixel Awards. In the comments down below, tell us what you think should have won these awards. And Don't forget to subscribe and like this video and listen to this podcast on your favorite podcasting app, the also, Picture This Photography Podcast. Yeah, and also, are there any other categories that we should add? We thought about a People's Choice Award so that you could give your opinions, but we just failed to do that. We are um, not very well organized. Yeah, we're going through some stuff. And we're also thinking about other categories as well. So if you have any ideas for new categories for next year, please put them in the comments down below. And thank you Squarespace for making this award show possible for so long and for making incredible, easy to use websites. If you want your own website, portfolio, store, gallery, whatever, go to squarespace.com slash Chelsea and use the coupon code Chelsea to get 10% off. That's C-H-E-L-S-E-A. Thank you, Squarespace, and thanks to y'all. See you next time. Happy New Year. Woo. Woo. Goodbye. Oh, no. The truth has been revealed. <laughs> <laughs>